Take three. Um, I guess. God damn it. Uh, uh, I was trying to do uh, some new recording style by recording with the rear-facing part of the camera, um, which would have had better picture, but uh, after doing 30 plus minutes twice and not having any footage saved at all to show for it, I'm going to go ahead and just use the selfie camera so that I can at least monitor whether or not this thing is turning off or not. Um, so I don't waste any more of my time, or yours, uh, if I actually get this filmed this time. So, uh, I'm going to be a little bit faster this time because I've had practice now. Um, this video is going to be covering my Maverick 88 um, shotgun. Um, I picked it up before I actually got my m and um, 15 Sport 2, an AR-15 assault rifle. Um, but that kind of took precedent because there was a lot more to upgrade on the AR, obviously, because it's such a modular platform. Um, so I kind of just put the uh, shotgun on the back burner. Um, and I didn't do any upgrades to it right away because it kind of came out of the box, like, totally usable. Um, which is not to say that my other guns haven't, but I am rambling. Um, anywho, let's just get right into it. So, this is Voodoo Tactical, um, Shotgun Scabbard. This is the case that I use for it. I normally don't go over my cases, but this one is more of like a specialized kind of thing. Um, because this influences how I do my upgrades because I need everything to fit in here. Unfortunately, um... I could just, you know, say, nah, fuck it, and just, like, put it on a rifle bag, and then do whatever kind of upgrades I want to it, but I'm not quite at that point yet. And if I can keep everything compact and slim, then I'm going to. So, that's just the way I'm doing it. Um, so, yeah, let's get right into it. So, this is my Maverick 88 shotgun by Mossberg. Um, give you a good look at it. I'm going to be explaining every one of my upgrades here so far. Um, this initially was the security model. It was 240 out of the box. Does not come with all this stuff. Um, the stock was this. Pretty standard synthetic black stock. And the forend was this. Just another really standard synthetic forend. Um, I will note on the forend, you cannot just replace the plastic part on these forends with the 88s, at least, as far as I know. Um, at least I couldn't with mine. Um, because this is literally just a molded piece of plastic with pins here to hold the um, action bars and you can't do anything with that you can't change this out um, you can take it off and replace it with another action tube that you can then put different four ends on but this as is is not customizable you have to replace this whole thing so you have to get a whole new action tube and those can be kind of expensive i'll get into that um, so first things first we'll go over the stock um, this is the SGA 590 stock, designed for the Mossberg 590. Um, however, this is not a 590, as you might have noticed. Um, it'll fit any of the Mossberg family of firearms. Oh, well, shotguns. So, like, Mossberg 500 family of shotguns. There you go. And the Maverick 88 is part of that family, as much as it's kind of like a black sheep. Um... It has adjustable LOP here. You can change that out by putting in LOP plates. Um, I think it comes with four extra on top of the one that it uses to adhere to the butt pad here. It's a really nice thick butt pad and I'm probably going to need it because 12 gauge is, well, it's 12 gauge. Um, but yeah, it's got a, a little uh, sling standard integral sling here, sling mount. Um, once you remove this part here, you can also check this, and there's cheek riser attachments you can get 
to raise this up if you want it up for some reason on a shotgun. I'm not going to judge, but, you know, whatever. Um, but, yeah, I really like this design a lot more. This cut right here um, makes it, feels a lot more like a pistol grip because of the part right there. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. It just feels better. Um, I've tried the pistol grip. I'll show you that real quick. Um, I got this off eBay for about 20 bucks. <sighs> pistol grips on a shotgun suck. I love pistol grips because they just feel comfortable, you know, they form fit to your hand. But, man, you take that first shot without a stock coming back, and it's, it's shit. And this one, this one doesn't allow um, for any kind of extra stock to be added um some of them do and if you're gonna go with a pistol grip i highly recommend you get one that comes in stock um so don't don't be a fool like me and try and use just a regular pistol grip and think like gears of war does it you know don't be an idiot um you'll get yourself hurt because it's dangerous um first time i fired with the pistol grip I completely lost my grip on the forehand, and the shotgun flew out of my hand. And I had a really fucking tight grip on this thing. So, just be careful out there, folks. Shotguns are, shotguns are a lot. They're a lot to, a lot to play around with. Um, so the next thing um, is this Tactar side saddle here. Um, it allows you to have six shells just sitting right on the firearm um, which is super nice because for me I do not like to have my magazines um, full or loaded um, because I feel like that's kind of dangerous because if you forget then something bad could happen um, I don't even keep around in the chamber or anything like that I'm just like stupid safe like, to the point where a lot of people would argue it's not safe at all because then I can't use the firearm as quickly. But, I mean, I can drop one of these and load it in the side here. Obviously, I wouldn't do it like that with this hand, but I also wouldn't have this facing left-handed for some reason. So, it would be more like, more like this, and then I can just pop that down, drop it, drop it in. Um... Obviously, things are never going to go to plan when shit hits the fan. That rhymes. Trade bar. Uh, no, I don't, I don't actually care about that. But uh, anywho, but yeah, it's, it's just nice to have those on the side there. I consider it a safety feature. Um, I guess in a way you could consider technically everything about a firearm a safety feature. <sighs> because it's designed to save your life. Um, but... Yeah, uh, it's it's just nice to have, um, so that I don't have to keep the tube fed or the tube full. Um, also, it comes with a Picatinny rail already integrated into the saddle, um, and where this particular 88 was not tapped, um, there was no way for me to put an optic on it. I don't have an optic on it right now. I'm um, thinking maybe like a micro reflex sometime down the road, but. Yeah, um, it's nice to have the option to put an optic on it. Um, and then, yeah, we get into... Let's just get into this heat shield first. Um, this is a $20 um, polymer fiberglass, I don't know, mishmash um, heat shield that I was able to snag from Slade Street Tactical for about 20 bucks. Um, and it is really nice for what it is. Um, and yeah, I really like the look it adds to the shotgun. Um, and I'm sure that I will love 
not burning my goddamn fingers. Um, but these things are, like, damn near indestructible. He's got a bunch of videos of him, like, running it over and, like, hitting it with a hammer and shit. So, like, don't be thinking, like, oh, it's cheap. Like, I would never put that on my... This is a $240 shotgun. This is a $20 heat shield. And both of them are damn near indestructible. So, sorry. You can go cheaper and still get good quality stuff. That's the reality of life. You don't have to spend top dollar on everything you buy just to make sure you get the best shit. Uh, unless you're a fucking jack wagon marine fucking bashing open fucking concrete doors with the fucking frame receiver of the damn gun you're gonna be fine it's gonna work it's not gonna break probably anywho moving on uh problem with the heat shield though is that it does interfere with this magpul forehand which i'm getting it into now um magpul forehand the lips come up really really high here um so it would normally interfere with the heat shield um the standard mossberg heat shields the metal ones probably won't work with this um it actually says on magpul's website that this forend will interfere with heat shields you won't be able to use one um generally that's correct um this heat shield works for me because i filed it down i did a little bit of modifications Technically, you're not supposed to do modifications because it's dangerous, but literally just taking a file, filing some of this stuff off, making it fit. It's furniture. You know, you can't get in trouble for furniture. Yes, you can. Don't quote me on that. I'm not a lawyer. <laughs> Anywho, yeah. Uh, so the Magpul uh, 4N is really nice, um, really comfortable, lots of room to put your hands on um there's three m-lock slots on either side of it for whatever kind of gadgets and gizmos you want to put on it um and then i have a hand stop on here as well um this is um just like a 30 dollar hand stop set i'm not sure why it's so expensive actually um maybe it's 25 and then it was just shipping or something anywho that's neither here nor there. Um, so this normally is actually um, a couple pieces. So it's this piece right here and this piece right here. And then there's this chunk in the middle between the two. Um, but you can actually remove this part and separate these and then just fill it in with rail covers. Um, I've got the Magpul Type 2 rail covers here, which are actually the same exact texture as the little piece of plastic divider that comes with these. Um, so, overall, not changing a whole lot, just extending it out one space. Don't need to do that because my hand would normally fit fine here. Um, and in fact, maybe I will actually pull it back a little bit. I don't think I need all that on there, but this is just in case I hand this over to a buddy who has bigger hands. Um, you know, he can still fit his whole hand in here. And realistically, like, if I slide up this far, I'm just gonna hit the hand stop. So, yeah. Anywho, that's the whole point of the hand stop is just stop your hand from falling off here and ending up right here and then getting blown to bits. Um, so yeah, that's uh, that's the Maverick 88 with Magpul furniture and a Tackstar side saddle. And that's really all there is to it. Um, oh, and the heat shield and the head. So, um, overall, I've probably spent a lot more on upgrading this gun than I did on this gun initially. Actually, let's just run through this real quick. So this was 110. Um, side saddle was, uh, 70. Um, I had to get an action tube in order to replace the forend, so that was another 70. Um, the forend itself was, I think, 35. Hand stop was 25. Heat shield was 20. Yeah, we're, uh, we're already, <laughs> we're already looking at enough money to buy a whole nother shotgun. Um, so I guess... Economy practicality wise, 
you'd probably rather just have another shotgun you can hand to your buddy, but, um, I'm kind of an idiot. Um, and I really like my guns to look cool because most of the time I'm just looking at them and that's all I'm interacting with them anyways. And that's, I would say that's probably the case for a lot of firearms owners in America right now. Um, especially with COVID going on. So, yeah. So that's it. Um, yeah, uh, this one was pretty short, so pretty happy with that. I'm going to go ahead and just uh, make another video, I guess. So we'll say got two coming up today. So stick around.